on the right, Team Card Hoarder player. On left, see Cedric Phillips. Normally here in the booth, he's over at the table. Checking out his fantasy sports teams, no doubt. Devin, a slight deviation. Rather than Bant Company, it's Bant Humans. Something I think, but a more aggressive take. One that I actually think may help him against the Mono White Humans deck. Yeah, he'll have a lot of the same cards, but he has the Collected Company kind of a breaker to go over the top. Yeah, that card came, seems great. I know that the Bant Humans deck frequently plays Lam if has four Lamholt Pacifists in the main. That card, excellent against Mono White. Yeah, and Kepke, four full copies here. Only three Thraben Inspectors, so Cedric is going to be advantaged on the Inspector front. <laughs> I like it. That card like Thraben Inspector, you would think a multicolored deck wouldn't want to play it, because they. but in Kevin's situation, no, the card's just actually good. Yeah, you just need the high threshold of humans, and the 1-2 is better in his slower deck than two ones. Kepke on the draw, scries to the bottom. Cedric on the play with Mono White Humans, maybe the most important part of the match. Starts on Expedition Envoy, plays another Envoy, passes. Yeah, we kept the one lander. What are you going to do about it? Can cast almost every spell in his entire deck off of one planes. It's going to take a long time with just the one. Yeah, there aren't any deck stones in Devin's main deck, so, we're, so he's okay. Doesn't just immediately, you know, planes lose. Mm -hmm. But another Evolving Wilds from Kepke. <laughs> yeah, there we go from Cedric. He's got the second planes. And now we're underway. Thalia's lieutenant pumps the envoys. Here comes six. Looks like Cedric also with a declaration in stone in hand might make a quick game here. And Kepke with, down to 12. With the lieutenant here, it's really quick. Clear why that one land hand was keepable. As soon as he found that second land, his board position is looking mighty good. Back to Kepke. This is his turn three. All right, Draws. So. Canop gets Prairie Stream. His colors are online and his lands are untapped, but he hasn't played a spell just yet. Right, is it time to start casting? He's got some options here. Reflector Mage. That'll work. That'll t put an Expedition Envoy back in Cedric's hand. We go to Cedric's fourth turn. Bouncing Thalia's Attendant, rarely a good idea, so I like bouncing the Envoy. Knight of the White Orc, it will be the play, though. That will go ahead and get a planes, put a counter on Thalia's lieutenant. Drew a planes as well, so here's a land four for Cedric. And we're going to declaration in stone away the blocker. I don't think we mean Expedition Envoy, so we're going to actually have him play the right card, but he does have a declaration in stone. <laughs> uh, not to mention he can't play Expedition Envoy because it was reflected. See, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, okay. There we are. Cedric was too busy <laughs> showboating to cast the right spell, as we saw. He extended his creatures well beyond the red zone, practically into Devin's face. Devin down to seven. He has another land. It's a plains, but I think he'd like to double Lamholt Pacifist here, but only one green mana source. If he has a collected company, he could try to spin that. Just hit something great. Yeah, presumably a collected company would be better than casting just one pacifist. Question is if he has it, though. Two mana. Looks like he's going to go. This I, I don't think he has it. He has two main deck Tamiyo Field Researcher. I want to say I see that card in his hand. That card seems particularly. I don't like it at all in this matchup. No, it's just really too slow. Cedric has three creatures. If he minus it, it's right. just dead to the third. Pacifist for Devon. Cedric's hat has turned 90 degrees since his last turn. We'll see if that play works out for him. <laughs> He's really getting his trash talking game on point. He does have a pro tour coming up. Well, it's trash talking without any speech. I like that part of it. Right. The nonverbal cues are a very essential part of a good game. Counting toward his those last seven points of damage. Yeah, another declaration in stone. This time, actually casting the correct spell from his hand. I like that. Second clue. This is lethal. Here's an Expedition Envoy to try to make it more lethal. It's close. It's gonna look, this is the fifth turn here, and that's going to be the game. So Cedric Phillips up 1-0 over Devin Kepke. And quick one there. We're going to go as... Mono White Humans takes the first game. One of the things I really like about the deck is how good it is on the play and how punishing it is of missteps. And it did both of those there. Yep. 
Kepke no action until turn three, and he was well behind on board by that point. Yeah, so I think you have, you have a, a space that was turn four win. Turn so we were, four so win. we were so close. I don't have that one either. I don't have that one either. It's messed so, up. Yeah, it's messed up. We're going to look at the sideboards first. We're going to start quickly with Cedric Phillips' sideboard. He's got some four ofs. Militia Captains, Archangel of Tides, Gideons. After that, he's got two Silk Grabs and a Plains. Well, basic planes can't can't be great here. I, I don't I don't think so. It's like if he boards in four Gideons, he probably yeah, that's where you him. want it. I like the two silk wraps and the militia captains. Those will allow him to kind of keep pace on the table here in a matchup like this. And on Devon's side, a Duskwatch recruiter, a Knight of the White Orchid, three Gideon allies, and a car, two Nissa Vastwood sitter, two Days Undoing, two Declaration of Stone, two Negate, two Tragic Arrogance. Big finds here. The two Declaration of Stones would have been much better than Reflector Mage against that uh, Expedition Envoy onslaught. The Tragic Arrogance also play we quite well here. Recruiter helps him lower his curve. Uh, Gideon's okay here. Once you get to turn four on the play, casting Gideon's usually quite good against humans. Yeah, it does something here, though it does cost four. So we talked, Josh talked to you about the season three schedule that was coming up for the season. Now you might have seen the regionals on the schedule. So what of course, what is that? All right, well we have the StarCityGames.com regional championships. These happen the same weekends as the Pro Tour. Now we have announced the dates and you see this exclusive playmat that's being given away at Star City Games regionals. So we have that token and the playmat guaranteed to the first 200 players to go to the each of our regional championships. Now this is gonna be October 15th. It's going to be standard. So this will be new standard after Kaladesh. So make sure you get your deck ready and kind of get the cards you need. This is part of the SEG Tour, so will be prizes. First of all, our cash prizes to the top 32 players. But on top of that, SCG points, all up to 20 for first place, along with a qualification to the next Invitational or any Invitational in the next year for all of the top eight players. We have it at, four, at 15 locations around the country. You see them on the map here, the, the stars, and a list there. So you can find out more, including the specific venue for your site. And make sure you be one of those first players registered as we want to make sure you get a play mat. All of this is available at starcitygames.com slash regionals. That event's mid-October. Reasonable chance I'll be hitting the Minneapolis region regional. Uh, with it being mid-October, I probably won't be wearing a Halloween costume, but I'm not going to rule anything out at this point in time. All right, sir. So, for Cedric Phillips, SCG commentator from Strongsville, Ohio, he's got a pair of open top eights. Uh, and if you follow his Twitter, you may know a lot of this stuff about him into Yellow Card Paramore. I didn't actually know about Newfound Glory because I don't think he tweets about that one as often. But... I didn't know the last thing, and this is pretty neat. Uh, attrition of eating cinnamon toast crunch once per year on Christmas Eve. So that's the kind of thing that might have a really happy origin or might have some horribly depressing backstory. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I'm kind of curious. I really like cinnamon toast crunch. That stuff's great. <laughs> well, if you mm -hmm. like it, you eat it more than once a year, right? Right. It's like you don't want to lose its specialness or you don't like it. Also, it's is he just like gorging on the entire box? Or <laughs> like That's going to leave a lot left behind. Or is he just eat it over the course of the day? It's like Christmas Eve morning. Or is this like we're having it like at night while we're waiting for Santa? We're Does he gonna... borrow a cup of Cinnamon Toast Crunch for a friend on that day? Because what do you do with Yeah, it's not, I mean, maybe it's the same box because, you know, it would take like a lot of years <laughs> to get through the box. <laughs> You know, Otherwise, you're wasting it. We're wasting it, right? Stale cinnamon toast crunch it's again. Like, I mean, yeah. Had a great Christmas. It's like once every eight to ten years, you got to go get a, get a new box. <laughs> <laughs> Kepke on six. He'll be on the play, which is going to be helpful for him. Maybe you just get the little fun-sized ones. Okay, sure. Right. I forgot about those. I don't know where you buy them. You have to, like, buy a yeah, variety those, pack. Yeah. They usually come in, like, multiples, but you can keep the package sealed for the second one. All right. Prairie Stream to start for Kepke. For Cedric, it's going to be some sort of one drop. Oh, it'll be three of an inspector making a clue. Second play for Kepke. Lamholt Pacifist. So if you're going to have to mull the six, this is the way to do it. That card is phenomenal in the matchup. Much better on turn two than turn four, that's for sure. Second play for Phillips is going to be a Hanvir Militia Captain. These have come out of the sideboard for the matchup. Against a deck that is low on removal, the card can be really impactful. Mm -hmm. Devin, land number three, but no play. Flips his creature into a 4-4. But the no play part, that can come back to get him. You really need to tap out against these humans' decks. Right. For Sadrick, Knight of the White Orchid is creature number three. It'll get a land. And there are four Dramokas command in Kepke's deck. If he's sitting on that, this might be okay. Though so Cedric, uh, if he had access to a Declaration in Stone here, that'd be better than okay. 
Do they have a land four? He does. It's a Plains and Thalia's Lieutenant. So the interaction here between flipped Hanvir Militia Captain and Thalia's Lieutenant is pretty disgusting. It's another combo. Not to mention he's going to flip back the Pacifist. So... And looks like no yeah, Dramoko's command uh, for Kepke as well. He's going to draw a Plains. Wished he would have had that last turn. He could have kept playing on curve. Mm -hmm. Though he has a collected company. Yeah. He probably needs to... It's interesting. He's got a Reflector Mage in hand. I'm wondering if he plays the company. If he doesn't hit a Reflector Mage off it, that Militia Captain's going to flip. And that's just... He just can't let that happen. So you see Reflector Mage will take care of the Militia Captain. Mm -hmm. Trying to get some traction. Wants to be on the battlefield in a significant way. Yeah, Militia Captain... We talked about the sideboard card here. The front side is innocuous, but if that had stuck around, it would have flipped into Westvale Cult Leader. And that thing's not okay at all for, for Cedric to have, if you're right. right. It's huge. It makes a creature every turn, which pumps Thalia's Lieutenant every turn, which just makes the game impossible. Go a little bit wider, go a little bit bigger every turn. It itself is gigantic and only gets larger. So we're back to Phillips. This is his turn four. Swings with Knight of the White Orchid. It's a 3-3 first strike right now. So no great block for Devin. He'll go to 16. Yeah, of his attacks, that one was the free one. There was no way he was losing that in combat. Archangel of Tithe. Cedric has definitely gone big out of the sideboard. Okay. It's going to make it hard for Devin to navigate combat. Devin draws Declaration in stone. Also flies over all of Devin's stuff, so he can start getting aggressive with that Archangel. What Devin will hope for is he has two copies of Tragic Arrogance in his sideboard. Those will do a ton of work for him if he can survive to cast one. Yeah, Arrogance is about his best card in this matchup once the game gets to that point. Both players trading creatures back and forth. The advantage seems to look for Cedric. If, they, mm. if no player does anything, Cedric's creatures are set to scale bigger. Yep. He's got an Archangel, this Lieutenant, and the Militia Captain in hand. They're all going to be very good. And Kepke has Collected Company in his hand, but if he's casting that, having some difficulty paying for the Archangel. Yeah, and you mentioned that one here. We'll look at Archangel of Tides. If it's attacking, Devin needs to pay one mana per blocker. If it's untapped, Kevin needs, Devin needs to pay one mana per attacker. Now, if Chesrick gets aggressive on the table here and Kepke can company into a Reflector Mage and bounce the Archangel, suddenly this could really be going his way. Right, so that, that's the, the scary part. So you're looking at why doesn't Cedric just swing out? Is that if Kevin or Devin just has a very strong company, it can be punishing. Cedric will start by Declaration and stoning away the Pacifist. And at this point, that might make... Devin's board's small enough that Cedric's willing to attack into it, especially when he has that mm -hmm. cult leader. And this also makes it so Cedric doesn't have to worry about Archangel Avacyn, because with uh, that gone, Kepke can't cast that with four lands. Oh, I apologize. I am thinking of Dustmark. The other Schroeder. flip guy. This yeah, this one's just a 4-4. Four, four, this was never on that. Too many werewolves. The two man, the same mana cost. The fact Bo <laughs> both get one bigger when they flip. The fact that there are two is just very egregious. <laughs> One common one. No, I guess they're both uncommon. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll allow it. The challenge is upheld. Cedric, land five. We know he has the cult leader. He's giving pause to cards like Tragic Arrogance right now. If he extends cult leader into it, he, he would probably lose the game to Tragic Arrogance. So he'll Griff's Boon the Thalia's lieutenant. Puts that on the lieutenant because if that's getting hit by a reflector mage, Cedric's just fine with that. Now he swings the whole team. None of his creatures can be lethally blocked. Uh, I mean, as it stands. Devin's collective companies. Now, if he doesn't hit a reflector mage, he cannot block anything. Yes. So, six cards. And a, he's going to need a big six and it's going to have to start with reflector mage. These cards don't look like Reflector Mage. They don't look like gold cards. You're not, you're not wrong. So he'll be taking the full set of damage. Lamo passed with Thalia's Lieutenant. So he'll get 1-1 one, one counters for his creatures, but no blocks. 
This is okay. He has a good amount of power for a crackback, though I think he's still losing this race. Yeah, it's going to be three. That's me 11 from Cedric. Make that 10. Devin's down to five. Devin's really looking for land tragic arrogance here. Yeah, outside of that, it's going to be hard for him to block through this. Cedric deciding, does he want to push in that last piece, the, the militia captain? Looks pretty aggressive. He can sit back. He does have that clue hanging out from the inspector still. Yeah, he'll do it. Here's the militia, ca militia captain. Puts a counter on the, the Thalia's lieutenant. A little post-combat pump my lieutenant. It's fine, though. He, he assumed that Kepke's on Collected Company here, and he just didn't know what the fines were going to be. Kepke finds Reflector Mage for the turn. So my read here is that if Devin does not reflect the Archangel, he loses because he can't block enough creatures. Yeah. The, the so unfortunate side effect of that is that this, guy's, this militia captain is going to turn into the cult leader. Mm -hmm. And when that happens... And the Thalia's lieutenant's already very close to lethal. And it has a grip spoon on it. It'll just take one. Yeah, it's three powers. It'll take two humans from Cedric. Mm -hmm. It's not much. The deck is called Mono White Humans. It has a f quite a few of the cards with that type line. Cedric has boarded into some stuff. You know, he has angels and what have you, so it's a little diluted, but still plenty of ways to make that lethal in the following turn. Maybe looking at Declaration in Stone now. Devin will crack his clue. That's a sign of someone who does not like a situation. A third Reflector Mage isn't going to do much. He'll Declaration in Stone away the Archangel. Yeah, and he's just not going to be able to engage in combat favorably as long as that's on the table. I actually like this play from Devin. So if you, need, you assume that he has to hit Tragic Arrogance land, then this is the, the cracking the clue is actually some play he had to make because he's both the land and the arrogance away from the out. Mm -hmm. So he has to draw two cards. So you might as well crack a clue. Now, Devin didn't hit. Yeah. And we turn into a cult leader. She's a 4-4. Four, four. Drop Cedric's Anointer of Champions, but his board looks great. Kind of wishes the Griff Spoon was in his graveyard so he could just put that up on the cult leader, but still in a fine position. Right now, for Phillips figuring out if the swing is just the flyer or whether there's profit in swinging more. And how many Griff Spoon is Cedric working with this week? Three in the main, none okay. in the board. It's likely worth it to crack these clues pre combat because if he finds that, he just wins on the spot. Perhaps he doesn't have them in post board, though I think they're quite good in this matchup. That's what we're going to do. Here's one clue. Griff's Boon. Anointer of Champions. Anointer of Champions. All right, two pumps for the lieutenant. That'll do it. 2-0. Cedric's on to 7-1. and one. Yep. Two humans also. Great way to clean that up. Pretty efficient.